Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to the Boss Report. Well, today we're taking a step back from analyzing corporate earnings and taking a higher level or more macro level look at the economic prospects for Trinidad and Tobago in reviewing some of those comments and, and, and information that would have been revealed during the media review uh, delivered by the Honorable Minister of Finance last week, Monday. Now, it seemed to be a lot of good news uh, at a very high level, and how will that affect investor sentiment going forward in terms of being able to take more risk or being more, uh, more open to taking more investment opportunities in the Trinidad and Tobago economy? Well, let's take a look and let's discuss that now. So at a very high level in terms of the revised budget projections, well, revenues are expected to come in, as mentioned by the Honorable Minister of Finance, at between four and a half to five billion dollars above initial estimates, which would put a revised uh, budgetary revenue for the fiscal 2022 year to around $47.8 billion, up from 43.3. Now that came with, or that is coming with an increase in expenditure also of about 3.1 billion uh, based on the supplementary appropriation uh, that was put forward <clears throat> by the Honorable Minister of Finance. And most of that spending is actually going to be in recurrent expenditure, paying some bills that may have been outstanding for some time. So not necessarily capital expenditure or developmental expenditure so much, but certainly going to be cash that comes into the economy by way of recurrent expenditure and uh, providing uh, some much needed liquidity to businesses and other service providers to the government. And that, in a nutshell, is going to result in a fiscal gap narrowing uh, from 9.1 to just about $7.7 .7 billion, which would equate to, based on the GDP projections, provided of around 4%. Uh, in terms of a fiscal deficit to GDP level, which is a marginal improvement uh, from that 4.7% level of uh, fiscal deficit to GDP that was offered at the initial reading of the fiscal 2022 budget way back in October. Now, when we talk about GDP recovering well, it seems to be good news uh, as preferred by the Honorable Minister of Finance. Uh, fis uh, for revised uh, fiscal 2021 GDP has come in, according to the minister, at $170 billion based on the CSO data. Uh, when we actually visited the CSO uh, website, however, we did uh, see that the GDP was still being uh, recorded at around $157 billion, but that may be revised upwards, so the data may be lagging just a bit based on the Ministry of Finance data. And of course, 2022 forecast in, uh, forecast. GDP or output or economic activity is going to increase to just around 180 billion based on the minister, Ministry of Finance's forecast. And certainly that could be a good thing. Now, take this with a pinch of salt. This is nominal GDP, so it is not inflation adjusted, but it is nonetheless still a positive trend uh, in terms of news for investors that economic activity is on the rebound, not just from the energy sector, which will be playing a, a significant part, but also from the non-energy sector contributors in the coming fiscal year based on the minister's projections. Now, debt to GDP was also something that was made mention of, and one, uh, the minister would have asserted that there was much, there was a stabilization in borrowings that no net new borrowings would have taken place really substantively since uh, December 2021. And with that upward revision to debt uh, to, to gross domestic product or GDP, that would take our debt to GDP figure uh, down to 77% from that 82% in fiscal 2020. And the projections for fiscal 2022 is to close at just about 72%. So certainly from an indebtedness level, the country is heading, or the economy rather is heading in the right direction for now, uh, given that robust rebound in uh, GDP and that stabilization of borrowing. So investors should be a little bit more optimistic and certainly in the near term, that could be good news for our international credit ratings, the international credit ratings of Trinidad and Tobago, which uh, may uh, live or, or stay on, have a stay of extension or stay of execution rather in terms of any potential downgrades that could occur in the near term. Now, when we, the minister also uh, alluded to uh, m many of our uh, regional peers and how we would compare or Trinidad and Tobago's debt to GDP would compare. And as we can see in that red uh, column, we are 77% with a triple B minus rating from Standard & Poor's, which is pretty much in comparison with uh, the Brazil and Brazil's and Bahamas of the region who have materially lower credit ratings of B plus and double B minus uh, respectively. But we are much closer to the credit rating of Mexico, for example, who has a debt to GDP of 52% and uh, a, a credit rating of triple B minus, which is investment grade. So certainly uh, in relatively good company when it comes to that investment grade rating. 
uh, and a good uh, trend in terms of downward uh, movement of our debt to GDP levels. And finally, one of the major uh, good news items that was uh, put forward was that there was going to be, after a considerable amount of time, uh, a contribution to the Heritage and Stabilization Fund. And in fact, when we, when we looked at our records, uh, the H HSF records, there has not been a contribution since September of 2013 or thereabouts. So it would mark almost a decade of no contributions. In fact, since 2013, uh, there has been a decline in net contributions from around $4 billion to $1.5 billion. The fund has really been supported in large part by very robust investment returns. And as of December, the fund's value was up around $5.6 billion. And that contribution may play a very significant role in the near term, given the extreme market volatility that has been faced at the international level uh, and the impact that it could potentially have on the Heritage and Stabilization Fund's investment returns in the coming quarters. So certainly that net contribution, uh, which is yet to be quantified, will certainly be welcome. So what will investors think overall with this good news being brought to bear and being revealed? Well, recovering GDP is always a good story. Stable borrowings is a very good story as well, given that our debt indebted level of indebtedness at the, at the country level would have increased uh, over the past couple of years. Deposits to the Heritage and Stabilization Fund also a bright factor and higher energy, energy revenues. Well, we can enjoy and revel in it for the time being because it will or should have a positive trickle down effect to the wider economy beyond just the absolute higher revenues uh, <clears throat> in the near term. However, there are some other factors which investors should be considering and would be considering uh, the fact that there's uh, important inflation of a significant degree and the Honorable Minister uh, or the Honorable Prime Minister rather, uh, rather would have spoken yesterday about CARICOM's uh, coordinated effort to improve food, food security in the region and that is more of a medium term initiative to arrest this in issue of imported inflation at the regional level. Higher fuel prices, of course, are going to have inflationary impact on the Trinidad and Tobago economy uh, eventually. And all of these factors could lead to a weaker consumer. So maybe not just out of the woods yet, investors may not have been fully positive after that media review in terms of sentiment, and they will be looking at sustained and sustainable uh, improvements in the Trinidad and Tobago economy, which only will be revealed with time. So that's it for this week's report. For more information, you can give us a call at 226-8773, email us at invest at bossfinancial.com, and check out all of our research, which is on our website, absolutely free, at bossinvestment.com, and in today's business section of the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian newspaper. Stay safe, and see you next time on The Boss Report. Thank you.